Hey everyone, in this short tutorial, I'm going to run you through how to dynamically make each button in a V4 uh, show a spinner of its own when a button is clicked. So in view two, uh, typically uh, all the tutorials mostly show you how to make one button clickable um, and it's very, very easy to do. But if you have a, a V4 and you have multiple rows and you have a button in each row and you want to click on a specific button to specify whether it's being clicked or not um, with a spinner it sometimes is a bit more difficult to set up but I'll show you and you'll get used to it it should be quite easy for you so as you can see I have a basic HTML document installed oh, set up sorry with view 2 uh, we have bootstrap and we also have uh, font awesome as well which we're going to use for the icons for the spinning icons so firstly, what we want to do is we want to go into our view instance and we want to go into our data property and let's just create our buttons so we can dynamically show some buttons. So firstly, inside data, we're going to do buttons, create an object called buttons and inside there we'll call create one called button one and we'll do name equals click me and then we'll do button two and then we'll give it a name of no click me. And then we'll do uh, one more, which is button three, name equals no, click me. Okay, so now we have three buttons and we can do a, a V4 quite easily on it. So div V4 equals B in buttons. And we could just do a create a button inside there in the repeater and we'll just put B dot name in there. So you should be able to see three buttons and they don't look too good because they're not styled. So let's just give it a bit of styling class equals button, button success and button large and give them a margin bottom of three each one. So if we refresh that now, there should be three buttons and you now what we want to do because these are dynamically generated, we want that each button to be able to click individually and a spinner to come up when you click on it but not show them all of them just show on each individual one so to do that firstly we need to identify the key in the row the unique uh, I guess the unique identifier of each row so to do that what we do is we open up the brackets here and do B comma key and then if I actually add the handle bars in there you should notice that uh, I'll do key and refresh it and each button will have its own number now okay so that's the first step so then what we want to do is we want to obviously do uh, an if statement so v if and we want to tell oh, my bad not in here not in the button actually in the icon so if we actually add the icon the font awesome icon into the button so i class equals fa fa spinner fa spin and refresh it you should see that each button will have its own spinner now but it's spinning and it shouldn't be so to make it not spin we put a v if inside the, the icon v if equals now we're going to create another property we'll call it uh, uh, buttons loading and just make it an array okay a blank array so then we do v if buttons loading and then we put the array name so the the name of the actual array is going to be one two or three or my bad name of the row is going to be one two or three but with view you can't uh use a number you have to use an actual name for the row so what we'll do is we will call it um uh what are we going to do we'll just call it b1 b2 and b3 now to do that, uh, what we need to do is we do buttons loading and inside the array we do B and then we have to do, so put the B inside the um, uh, little inverted commas, which is normal, and then do plus key. So what this should do now is it should check if that a specific array ex or array row exists in this button loading array and if it does then it will show the spinner if it doesn't it won't so 
If we go into our project now and refresh it, you'll notice that none of the spinners are working right now. So now we have to tell view that when that specific button is clicked, we want it to show that spinner. Now to do that, we need to do a, uh, um, assign a method to the button. So we'll do at click equals. So when, when the button's clicked, uh, do a method called click me. Okay. And then if we go into our methods and create one called click me and function and let's do an alert just to see if it actually works. So if we alert, all right, click me. Yep. Hi, 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 which is good. Okay. And then we need to pass obviously the key into that specific, uh, to that specific function. So click me and then the key. And then we receive the key through the function as well. And then if we just do hi plus key and refresh, uh, we should see hi and then the row number, which is good. Cool. Button one, button two, button three. Beautiful. Okay. Now, what we want to do is we want to uh, dynamically set um, a dynamically set into the buttons loading array so that when it checks to see if it exists, it does. So because right now nothing exists in this array, when you click on the button, you want it to actually add, for example, button one into there so that it knows, okay, well it exists and therefore I'm going to show the spinner. So what we do is we do view.set and then we do this.buttons loading. It's referring to the method inside this instance. And then we do, uh, I believe it should just be key and then one. Okay. So if we go back and we refresh it, nothing's actually happening. So if we go to our inspector, there is no error, which is cool, but I've just got to figure out why it's actually not happening. Okay, and I had a quick look and I realized that I didn't have to actually add this B plus key because the actual row is called each each button has its own name, which is completely fine. So what we do is we just need to change that to buttons loading key. If we go back, we hit refresh, you'll notice that each one loads individually. Now, obviously, you don't want the button to spin forever. So you have to go back and uh, then let's just say if you do a specific uh, Ajax request or, an, or use Axios to send your request, once you get a success from sending the request, you want the button to then go away. So obviously I can just do view set and then key zero. And then this is probably not going to show anything. Yeah, it won't show anything because it's just canceling each other out. So just as an example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a set timeout, um, which will basically uh, show you the button loading for two seconds and then it will go away. So to do that, what we firstly want to do is just get rid of that. Now, what we want to do also is set a variable called var the, uh, self equals this. I believe within functions, if you create functions within functions, or uh, I know when you're using Axios, you can't uh, refer to this inside the function. So you have to set a variable called whatever you want to refer to this. So let's do a set timeout, set timeout function. Um, and for it to go in two seconds after, uh, and let's add that view set buttons loading key to zero now. And then we also want to do make this buttons loading to self dot buttons loading um, because that way it can identify uh, this particular array there. So if we save that now and we go to refresh and let's do click me after two seconds, it should go away. And as you can see, there we go. So that's how you dynamically load spinners within buttons that are, uh, are dynamically loaded. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. And I really do hope this has helped you. Thank you very much. Cheers.